You also have a firm, SpyPon Partners, and it's known for its expertise in transportation asset management. So for listeners who may not be familiar with that term, can you explain what asset management means in this context and why it's so critical for transportation systems? Yes. So asset management in transportation is really about making best resource allocation decisions. So typically, when people talk about it, uh, you focus on physical infrastructure. So um, a typical State Department of Transportation will be spending uh, the majority of its budget, I mean, maybe more than the 60% range, on pavements and bridges, which are expensive and critical to roadway management, and how you make resource allocation decisions on um, the management of that infrastructure is, is critical to how much money you have for it, for other things, for instance. And so, you know, and the general notion when you get into a specific asset is that uh, preventive maintenance early on saves you a lot of money in the long run, um, rather than just doing nothing and waiting for it to deteriorate to the point that you have to replace it is much more costly over a shorter time period than elongating the life of an asset through a lot of early interventions um, through the early years. But, but, um, but in the broader sense, there are agencies that look at asset management from a broader context of total resource allocation because um, the, the investment in, in physical assets is such a big part of an agency's budget. Um, it, of course, influences what you're able to do in other areas like resilience building, like economic development, um, like bike ped, active transportation. All of those are objectives agencies have. And some agencies will look at asset management as the, the uh, um, kind of governing framework that helps to make um, agency-wide strategic decisions as well. You also chaired the Technical Activities Council of the Transportation Research Board, overseeing hundreds of committees and thousands of volunteers. So from that unique perspective, what new ideas or innovations do you see as an especially promising part of the future of the transportation? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think TRB committees and the the what they do are leading indicators of emerging needs and innovation. One of the reasons is that I mean it's totally volunteer driven. So meaning, you know, the the relationship is all self-motivated. Um, and it's one of the few forums in transportation where public sector agencies, the private sector companies that support them and their needs and academics are equally at the table to reflect, discuss, and brainstorm what's important and needs further research. I mean, it is the Transportation Research Board, so it is always, you know, keeping in mind what research should be should we be doing to think ahead. Um, and and a lot of this research is made possible because we have the federal gas tax that brings together money that can be invested into. The, the transportation system nationwide. Um, so um, in recent years, um, the area that, you know, clearly is the most exciting and emerging is around AI, machine learning and data. Now, AI, we see a, a lot of leap in, in capabilities that, um, is um, you know kind of materializing through uh, what's happening with the generative AI side. You know, a lot of this I think is in a continuum of just how everywhere we've gotten better at working with data, right? And so, so um, at the TRB Executive Committee, they have this kind of they used to call it the red meat session, but it's I think now called kind of you know, focus research topic or something like that. And a couple of years ago, they had one on AI. Even, uh, before the explosion with generative AI, it was the year before. And I remember listening and, and thinking that, 
well, this kind of just sounds like like just more data, you know, just manipulation of data. Um, so I I do think it's in a continuum, but you know, there are leaps made because of the capabilities that are now much more visible and understandable to the general public. Um, so so I would put that as top. Um, you know, in the past decade, connected and autonomous vehicles was clearly uh, a big focus area. And we saw, I, I remember going about 10 years ago to a meeting of all of the research directors from all the modal agencies under U.S. Department of Transportation. They have big research arms. And, and one of the, I forgot which administration it was, but they were talking about the research they were doing of scenarios where it was total autonomous vehicles in in cities and they were talking about how uh, they thought that about 30 percent of the real estate in washington dc would free up if we went to total autonomous vehicles where you don't need parking at anymore i mean they, they were relating it to the how much parking ends up taking up urban infrastructure. So, I mean, you know, we're not realizing that yet, but now, you know, just in the recent years, I mean, San Francisco is the poster child of seeing the Waymo uh, come to action. And we're seeing now the the self-driving part of, of Tesla's working pretty well. Um, I think that um, it'll be interesting to see what actually happens because I think there was a stagnation period <laughs> where everyone was so excited and then all of a sudden it's like, mm, maybe this isn't really going to happen <laughs> as quickly as we thought. So I think that's there. And then, and then the other area where there's a growing focus is just the whole need for resilience building and what we need to be doing. And I, I feel like there's a lot of talk and some initial um, activities, but I think we have a long way to go to become better at what we really need to do to build resilience into our transportation systems. Well, I guess the, the multidisciplinary um, aspect of like public policy, um, researchers, et cetera, all at TRB allows you to be at the forefront of transportation research. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's exciting. <laughs> well, I had a taste of it when I went last year. Oh, yeah. Well, you got to meet all the people, right? The varieties yeah. of people. Yes. Yeah. It was so exciting. Now, today, agencies are being asked to adapt to rapid changes like you touched on, such as AI-driven analytics, electrification of fleets, and new mobility technology. So from your perspective, how ready are agencies to adopt to these tools, and what obstacles do they face in making innovation a reality? Yeah, I think agencies aren't that ready, you know? I mean, it's sad to say, but part of it has to do is, I, I think, is change is really hard for any large organizations and government departments of transportation are large organizations and um you know and i i am seeing though as you know i'm part of research discussions about what do we need in our research pipeline into the future a growing recognition of paying attention to the science of organizational management in agencies, you know, typically, uh, like TRB started out as a very engineering focused um, organization, you know, back, I don't know when it was 100 years ago when it was formed. But, um, but um, I think that uh, I think everybody recognizes, okay, you can have the most brilliant ideas. But if you don't manage the people and the organizations to adopt these brilliant ideas, nothing is going to change, nothing's going to happen. And so, so it, it's good to see that there is more and more research being done about how do we have better leaders in organizations? How do we capture knowledge better? How do we make change better? You know, how, how do we really support the workforce that's needed to deliver transportation and you know and as you know it's a whole variety of 
the workforce does a whole variety of things from operating a, a transit bus to um, thinking big ideas as the head of a research organization within an agency. Um, so, so, so I think that's good to see. And, um, and then the other part is the recognition that, you know, delivering transportation really involves a large network of players in the communities that that transportation is being delivered. That includes a lot of different businesses and community groups that support the needed goods and materials that are used to deliver that transportation. And that just means there are also people who are gonna be impacted when all of a sudden you're proposing to do something different. Right, that that network of delivery impacts a lot of different players. So you need to take that into account, and you can imagine there's resistance when um, when you propose that. I mean, a, a great um, kind of aha moment I had was I, I was talking to someone at a cocktail party about a AI driven building a house design. platform that he was working. He's a venture capitalist. And so I said, wow, this would be great in transportation where you basically put inputs in and you get to a certain percentage design, you know, that would save a lot of money and in some ways may deliver more accuracy. So I, I brought it to one of the big, um, you know, meetings of all the state DOT leaders. And, and at that, those meetings are the big, Um, architecture engineering AE firms and the AE firms, they're totally resistant. They don't want that, Be, you know, and they're big players in transportation because they get paid by the person hour who works on design, right? And so, so, so anyhow, understanding all of those things are really important to making those kinds of changes. I think one big takeaway that I have from listening to you is that the the human aspect and understanding how all these relationships work and all the competing interests are very crucial to having a successful transportation change. Yeah, yeah.